Well, good day, everybody, and welcome to Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Uh, I blame my wife. Uh, she left me unsupervised again. Uh, the other day, I told her I needed to go out and buy some fork oil, and I didn't lie. I got the fork oil. Uh, problem is, I also brought home a new ute. Let's go check it out. It's a 2012 FG Mark II XR6 Turbo Ute. It's blue and it's a lot prettier than my old one. So let's have a look inside. And the interiors uh, on these are almost identical to the new FGX. Um, Ford didn't have enough money in the budget really to do anything really innovative with the, the new ones so in my view these are a better looking car and you've got the same appointments so it's a no-brainer for me um, yeah the XR comes with the insignia in the seat obviously and in the, in the floor mats um, there's plenty of room to put all your stuff there's lots of space behind the seats um, the console Cup holders, glove box obviously. The interior display is very nice. And the stereo system in it is uh, actually very good. It's touchscreen display, full Bluetooth in, um, integration, etc. Um, I've read some comments about the layout of the console and everything is not very intuitive. I disagree with that, I think it's pretty good. It's got a nice instrument cluster. The only thing missing really is a boost gauge, which would be useful. But no, I, uh, I'm very happy with my new right. specs time. So apart from all the interior niceties like power mirrors, cruise control, climate control, power windows, all the rest of it, uh, tilt and Height, height adjustable and uh, also in out on the steering wheel. The heart of the matter is under here. So this is an inline four litre six cylinder engine, one of the Barra engines from uh, Ford Australia. It produces, with a turbo and intercooled, it produces 270 kilowatts, uh, which is roughly 362 uh, horsepower. And it produces uh, 533 newton metres of torque, which is roughly 393 foot pounds. Um, it'll go from 0 to 100 or 60 kilometres an hour in uh, just over 5 seconds and does a standing quarter mile in about 13.4. So, out of the box from the factory, this isn't a bad jigger. The cargo space is very good. Um, the floor is very slippery, so I've fitted a rubber mat which stops stuff skidding around. Uh, probably not as practical as the old drop side I used to own. Uh, you could throw everything at that and it fitted and it didn't matter if you dumped a bucket of gravel or something in there. Uh, whereas this one I want to probably look after a bit better and I'll probably need to lower the tailgate to fit bikes in it. But it is lower to the ground so it does um, have that appeal. I, don't, I shouldn't need a winch to get my bikes up on it but I will have to remove the um, hard tonneau cover. So these come from the factory with a with a soft tonneau and this is a, a an optional extra that was fitted factory fitted but optional extra normal traffic it's quite easy to drive um, you don't have I think that that's the, the thing I like about modern the modern version of the muscle cars uh, and I think that this car legitimately fits into that category there's an XR8 ute just going past there now um, is the drivability at, at normal under normal conditions I mean you've got everything Take off from the lights, nice and gentle. 
fairly economical, uh, especially off boost, on boost, not so economical. But um, certainly if you drive it sensibly, you've got far better chance of having uh, you know, a decent fuel, re fuel economy return than you have with the XRA. And um, yet when you stick your foot into it, you get that instant torque and there's no real turbo lag. It just pretty well squeeze on the throttle and at any speed in any gear, you can really sort of feel that engine delivering that massive amount of torque right from about 2000 RPM. Car feels really light in the, in the front, but you feel connected. Um, I don't, you know, it's certainly no modern sports car, but um, the handling of these things is actually pretty good. I'm on the cruise control and uh, we can happily motor along and not worry about traffic tickets. I like the manual. The automatic, six speed automatic, is a very, very intelligent gearbox and is perfectly matched to the XR6 and they deliver a, a much better um, performance. So if you want some, they're faster than the manuals, essentially. But I like to have a gear stick. I like to drive the car. Um, it's been a while since I've owned a manual, so it's nice to be back in in control of the, of the gear stick. Because this is where the XR6 comes into its own. We're doing 60 kilometers now, it's a 60 kilometer zone. And we're about to hit 100. well and truly surpass that very promptly. So if you're faced with an opportunity uh, on a single lane highway somewhere where you need to be able to get that instant power to the ground to uh, overtake a slower vehicle, you can get the job done very quickly, very cleanly. And it will bring a smile to your dial, I guarantee to you. So why the XR6? Uh, Ford do make an XR8, which is a 5.4 litre V8. Um, I guess the reality is that the V8, they're a slug. Uh, everything, I wanted an XR8, but everything I read about them was just bad press. The engine, engine is way too heavy and makes the, the car feel terrible in terms of its handling. Uh, and it just doesn't produce that power that, that, that you would expect it to. Two things that the XR8 has going for it that the XR6 doesn't. One is to fit the 5.4 litre, they had to put a nice big bulge in the bonnet that looks really cool and it makes a much better exhaust note. Uh, if you're going to buy a Holden, you'd have to buy an SS to come close uh, and the SS is a you know, 5 litre, 5 litre uh, V8 engine. Much nicer car than the XR8 to sit in and to drive but they're not as fast as these. These, these will smoke an, an SS Commodore in standard trim. So this engine, as I said, produces 270 kilowatts with a little bit of, little bit of tweaking. It's uh, not unheard of to get, you know, up close to 500 horsepower fairly easily and, and well above that if you want to really put some effort into it. There's XR6 turbos out there with 700 rear wheel horsepower. So you can really get these things hopping. And of course, it's got the right number of doors. Um, the touring car series in Australia has led, helped lead to an obsession with four-door cars. I've never been a fan. I've had a, quite a number of four-door cars, but I prefer two doors. In fact, my wife's car is even a two-door. It's a 2015 uh, Mini Cooper Turbo. So we've got two petrol turbos in the drive. Um, for, those of, uh, for those of you that aren't living in the Australian market, if you like Aussie Utes, and um, even though there's been a trend away from the major manufacturers, in fact, uh, Holden and Ford are closing up manufacturing in Australia, sadly, you can buy these in America, uh, particularly the Holdens, because they built the Holden platform, designed and uh, built 
the manufacturing technique and platform for the Commodore series here in Australia, and that was exported to Detroit. And of course, there's a lot of Chevrolets and the Pontiac GDOs that are built on that platform. Um, so there's a guy in the States, lefthandutes.com. Uh, if you are after an Aussie ute, he does a van fantastic, he brings the shells in and then puts the Chevy drivetrains in them and um, converts them to left-hand drive. And it's he basically puts all of the left-hand gear out of the um, out of the American sedans because they do fit. So why are you? Uh, I've owned a few. I've owned a lot of cars. I've had more cars than I've had dinners. Um, at least four or five utes I think I've owned now. And uh, Aussie boys, we love our utes. It's um, something that has been um, sort of deep, in, it's very deep within our culture here in Australia, particularly in rural areas. Um, and it's a uniquely, well it's not uniquely Australian, but the first ute was an Australian, uh, born from an Australian idea. It was a 1932, there was a, the wife of an Australian farmer sent a letter to Ford and asked them to build her a car that she could drive to church on Sunday and then take her pigs to market on Monday. And um, they came up with this in 1934 and launched it onto the market. And it was always very popular here in Australia. And as soon as uh, Holden, which is a GM product over here, started manufacturing cars in 1948, and they very quickly followed with a, a utility version as well. And the Holden Ford rivalry has gone back generations. And there's always there's you know, a very strong touring car championship in here uh, going on here and the rivalry between Ford and Holden has always been at its best on the racetrack and you're either in one camp or the other. Me, I've owned both. Uh, I've owned lots and lots of Holdens and I've owned um, a, a couple of Fords now and heaps of Land Rovers and Toyotas and lots of other things, so, yeah, Mazdas in between, so uh, I, I'm not particularly biased. I think that the Ford Ute product now is a better product than, than the Holden. Um, there's lots that will argue that, but unfortunately quite a lot of the people that step out of Holden Utes over here in Tasmania look like this bloke. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's why that's why the Ute, I guess. Um, the, unfortunately in Australia, um, they haven't read the market very well. We, the taxpayer, have tipped billions of dollars into trying to rescue um, the Australian car manufacturing industry. We could have cured cancer twice over with the money that we have tipped into those businesses and they've just ignored what the public want and have continued down the line of the Commodore and the Falcon uh, to their demise. And they uh, are now folding up, to be honest. And they blame everyone else, but the reality is that they didn't uh, read the market and continued to build cars that we didn't want to buy. Well, when I say we, I do, but I've never been in a position where I can afford a brand new Ford or a brand new Holden, so I've always had to buy second hand. But yeah, so Holden finish up this year and Ford sadly closed down their plant uh, in Geelong in 2017, so that's it, that's the last of them there. Well, it's the second last of them, but I don't like the new model, I don't like what they've done, the horrible looking front end, try to make it uh, look a bit like a Mustang, I suppose, and to me it comes off looking like a poor Mitsubishi. Um, but essentially you've got exactly the same vehicle with exactly the same appointments and exactly the same uh, configurations sitting in the driveway out there and I, th I think it's a much better looking truck so uh, I'm going to hang on to this one and see where it goes. But anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned, usually we're, we've got motorcycles here but you're welcome to come back uh, and subscribe and don't forget to like and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.